Hello, my name is David Mogler. And I'm Eric Scott. We are the Journal Fodder Junkies. <laughs> and we've been working in journals for about 15 or 16 years. We're also the co-authors of the best-selling books, Journal Junkies Workshop and Journal Fodder 365. And we're here to share with you in our video workshops, sponsored by Strathmore. So there you go. <laughs> so here's a, a nice collection of materials of papers and, and uh, journals that we're going to use throughout these videos. We've got the uh, hardbound journals, we've got the soft cover journals, we've got a small sketch pad, some tracing paper, and the uh, skill series mixed media paper. In this video segment we're going to focus on working with watercolor pencils and exploring and experimenting with some of the diversity that's inherent in this material especially when working with some mixed media approaches and working in a visual journal. For this particular uh, video we're going to be working in one of the Strathmore art journals, the hardbound mixed media book um, for these exercises. And we're going to use some uh, watercolor paint, some yellow water soluble markers, of course you're going to need some water, a paintbrush, and you're going to need to sharpen your pencil, so a pencil sharpener is always good to have as well. So when uh, working with the watercolor pencils, Eric and I want to show you several different techniques. Um, the first technique that I'm going to demonstrate is just going to be working with the watercolor pencils and water as a way to sort of activate the pigment that's in the watercolor pencil. But instead of just sort of scribbling the pencil onto the paper, I'm going to sort of think about it and uh, get sort of get a, a composition started. So I'm going to work with some basic shapes to sort of get that together. So thinking about this as a, as a page, I'm going to work with just some basic triangular shapes to get a composition started. The watercolor pencil, for the most part, the material that's in this pencil is the same kind of material that's in a watercolor paint. It's just in a different kind of form. And just like watercolor paint, the more pigment I can put on the surface, the more vibrant the color is going to be when I activate it with whatever material I activate it with. In this case, it's going to be just activating it with some water. So I'm going to draw several triangles, spreading them out, varying the sizes, and as I said, just a way to get this page started. Not really thinking about a particular design or picture that I'm trying to create. I'm just trying to get the page started. So a bunch of triangles. If you've ever been told that you're a light-handed writer or a light-handed drawer, when you are getting this watercolor pencil on the paper, you might want to make an extra attempt to press a little bit harder. Because the, the more pigment you get on the paper, the more color you're going to get out of it. So just with a basic nylon brush, I'm going to get some water on that brush and brush it right over top of the watercolor pencil material. And as you can see, that activates that watercolor material and then I'm able to begin sort of spreading it around my page. With this particular design I'm going to be fairly careful to sort of follow the lines of that shape to sort of create something fairly structured. You can do that if you want to but it's not required. I'm just doing that with this particular demonstration. I'm concentrating on filling from the outside of the shape and filling into the page. If you wanted to sort of embellish and fill the shape in with the watercolor pencil, there would be no reason why you couldn't do that too. So as you can see, I continued to paint and I was able to get this page started with those triangular shapes, the watercolor pencil, and activating it with my brush. So, as like the previous technique, I have started this page with the watercolor pencil, drawing some basic shapes instead of a triangle, this time just working with squares and working with a different color. To get the page sort of activated, get some sort of a compositional structure down before I activate the watercolor pencil with another material. With the last technique, I utilize the water. This technique, I'm going to utilize the paint, the watercolor paint to activate this blue watercolor pencil. So the thing that's interesting with that is then I have the ability to then 
blend these colors and get some other colors to occur. So I'm going to start with a little bit of yellow and blend that into that blue. So just like plain water, watercolor paint will activate the watercolor pencil with the added bonus that you can get variations of blending with the color because you can use the watercolor paint as the sort of the activator of the material. And since it's blue, yellow is not my only option. I could also hit some of this red and see what kind of blending would occur with the blue and the red. So I have some a little bit more versatility with the blending of the material when I work with the watercolor paint. So I'm just about done here with the watercolor paint activating this space that I put the blue squares into. And similar to the way that I worked with the triangles, I sort of worked the outsides of the shapes, but as I said in that part of the video as well, you could always work the interior spaces of the shapes if that was something that you were interested in. But um, the main idea here is that just another way that you can activate that watercolor pencil utilizing the watercolor paint, another way you can get a page started so that when, you when I come back to this space, it's not just a white page with nothing there. I have something started, something to react to when I further uh, develop this page and continue to work on it. Another way that you can activate watercolor pencil is with watercolor markers. So a water-based marker works really well. Eric and I find that yellow markers work particularly well because they blend with a lot of different colors. So I've prepared this page similar to how I did the last few demonstrations just with some basic shapes so that I can then utilize this yellow marker to activate the watercolor pencil. Um, similar to what I did in the previous videos, I could use this marker to activate the watercolor pencil and then blend it so that it begins to fill the white space around the shape, like around this circle. I could even get some of this brown activated and get some of that to blend together. Or I might choose to actually activate the interior of the circle just by coloring over the watercolor material and allowing it to blend to fill the shape instead of outline the shape and fill filling the background. So there is some diversity with this material and you have multiple choices. Once again, utilizing the circles just to get the page started, just so that when I come back to this space, uh, there's, there's something on the page, something to work with, not just a blank space. So I've just about wrapped up this, getting this page prepared, and a couple of things have come to mind that I think that you should know about. One thing is, once you begin using one of these yellow markers for this process, as you can see, the tip of that marker basically gets ruined. Uh, it's, it's never really going to color yellow very well again. However, it can now become, become a, a dedicated marker for this particular technique. Also, the, the markers don't last forever, so it tends to wear down after a while. So another thing that I often do when I'm working with the yellow marker and blending it with the watercolor pencil material is I also use plain water to help spread the material around. So it just brings up a, a good point that even though I've been working here to show you each of these techniques separately, the intention is, is that you're picking up on the idea that these techniques can be combined very easily. They do not need to be worked with separately whenever uh, you decide to work in your journal with these materials. So we can use the watercolor pencil to kind of get some pages started, but we can also, like we did with the watercolor paint, to actually start to build some layers. So I've started 
uh, a composition here, a two page spread that I will actually just activate with water in order to create a first layer. Then I'll let that dry and then I'll come back and uh, do some other techniques on top of it and kind of show you some different things as well. So I've got my composition laid out and I'm just going to use the paint brush, get some water on it, and I'm just going to activate it with uh, the water, kind of scrubbing it around. I'm really going to kind of fill the space. And just like David showed you guys, I'm really going to uh, kind of focus on the outside edges just to kind of get something started. And then I'll, I'll let that dry and I'll be ready for the next layer. Okay, now that that layer is finished, I'm going to go ahead and choose a different color. And then I'm going to work on top of the dried pages to create my second layer. This time I'm going to use a dark green and I might just kind of ignore what's underneath it and kind of create something that crisscrosses and does something different on top. But I can still use some of the same kind of shapes, the rectangle, so that it doesn't seem completely different. Now that I have my green lines drawn in, I'm going to go ahead and use some yellow watercolor paint to activate the watercolor pencil to create my second layer. I like to kind of start with the yellow paint out here before I come in and actually touch the green paint. That allows the yellow to be a bit more vibrant and it really helps me create some color transitions. If I need to, I can kind of rinse out my brush before I get more yellow to make sure that that yellow is nice and intense. And you can see how that first layer of the blue watercolor pencil is showing through the watercolor paint. Okay, I finished the uh, second layer with the green watercolor pencil and the yellow watercolor paint. And then you may notice that I've added some blue lines. So I want to kind of show you how I have done those. There's a couple different ways to do it. One of the first ways is to actually dip the tip of the watercolor pencil. So I'm just going to dip it right into the water and then I'm going to draw with it. And this is really good for a lot of detailed work. Um, might not be the best technique to use to uh, start a page, but it's definitely something to use for patterning or to bring some areas of emphasis to it. And by doing this, the water kind of softens the tip and makes it look a little bit more like marker than the watercolor pencil. And you notice that I have to keep dipping it in order to keep the tip wet. Another way to do this is to actually wet the paper first. And I can either have it wet with just pure water or I can add uh, watercolor paint. <clears throat> and the tip of the watercolor pencil can be wet or dry. If it's wet, it kind of bleeds a little bit more. If it's dry, it doesn't bleed quite as much. But either of those are good techniques to uh, add some patterns, add some small details. For the final layer, I want to make a few areas of emphasis. So I'm going to take a brown watercolor pencil and I'm going to actually just layer it right over top of all of my layers underneath. And I'm going to use the yellow water-based marker to kind of make those rectangles, those squares kind of pop out. So I first put down my rectangles and then grab my marker and I'm going to fill in the rectangles instead of going around the outside. And what's neat is that the yellow marker will actually pick up the blues and the greens that are underneath as well and kind of spread them and uh, blend them out a little bit. And there I have three or four layers of watercolor pencil techniques to start this two-page spread. So thank you very much and uh, join us on the web and uh, check out our, our two books. Thank you.